Good day, creative geniuses. Welcome. Hey, it's Sunday, and we had a, an amazing service at the Foothill Center for Spiritual Living. For some reason, we couldn't record it, my talk and the service. And afterwards, I realized, and some people told me, it was a really good talk about paradox. So I decided when I came home, hey, I'll just record my talk, and at least it will be uh, here on our Facebook page, and we will be able to post it to YouTube. So I'm so happy to just be able to give you my talk again. So the monthly theme in the Centers for Spiritual Living in October is playing with paradox. And my topic today is the paradox mindset. So what the heck is a paradox? Well, it's a self-contradictory statement, the underlying meaning which, of which is revealed only by careful scrutiny and inquiry. And the purpose of a paradox is to invite attention and provoke fresh thinking or a new thought or a new idea. So some examples of a paradox is less is more. Seems contradictory, right? Or it was the beginning of the end. I know often when I teach a class at the center, after the six weeks of the class or however long, it's the end of the class, but we all feel like it's a new beginning because of all the learning we did. And then there's the failure paradox. You have to fail more to succeed more. Think about it. I mean, some of our greatest moments of growth often stem directly from our greatest failures, right? Yeah. What if there was a way to embrace all the contradictory ideas, thoughts, beliefs, and perspectives of the world instead of having to pick sides? Hmm. Yeah. Well, there is a way. We can develop this paradox mindset which again is the ability to hold multiple opposite ideas at once. And in doing so, it can open us to find solutions to some of our biggest challenges. We learn to turn obstacles into opportunities. Paradoxes are a natural part of life. We can learn how to use our curiosity and our vulnerability to get comfortable outside our comfort zone. Yeah. You know, I've been a yoga teacher for mm, over 30 years, and I've always talked to my students about when we're doing a yoga posture, we want to have effort, yes, in the posture, but there's also that aspect of surrender. So there's a beautiful balance of seeming opposites, efforting and surrendering. Am I efforting too much in this pose? Or am I completely letting go and surrendering? And surrendering isn't a complete release, by the way, but it's a giving, a re, it's an allowing, let's put it that way. So it's a beautiful balance. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, said, the riddle of the universe is a paradox. The question is its own answer. For the mind that asks the question is also of the mind that answers it. Hmm. So in our study of the science of mind here at the Foothill Center, Ernest Holmes reminds us to remain open at the top, not closed. And one of the ways in which we can do this is through embracing and developing a paradox mindset. And this type of thinking is actually very natural, a very natural part of the science of mind teachings. Think about it. We believe here in oneness, even while there is suffering and struggle and division in the world. We believe in the infinite and finite are one and the same. And we believe that our mind is an individual expression of the one mind. So you might say, oh, my bank account is depleted. 
Yet I know God is my source and supply, and I know that all is well. Well, if you said that to a friend who doesn't really understand metaphysics, they might say, what, you're broke and you're accepting it? Ah, it won't make sense to them. Yet, when we practice as a principle, giving begets receiving, we have an opening for an opportunity. We learn how to give what we want before the evidence appears. It's the law of circulation. We have to give in order to receive. And what I said last week was, if you want the world to be kind, you must become kind. Give kindness. If you want the world to be at peace, you must be at peace or become peace. So we're giving what it is we want. That's kind of a paradox in itself. And I'm sure you've heard in the Bible, you must lose your life to save it. That's a paradox that mystifies us until we really look closely at it. I must lose my life? Well, the life we must lose is the one that sees limitation only. Through that egoic lens. Our real life is that of a spiritual being having a time-space experience of being human. You've heard it before. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. We're not just humans having an occasional spiritual experience, although it might seem like that. So all of these ideas require a paradoxical mindset, the ability to hold these contradictory ideas at the same time. And this will deepen our spiritual understanding of the world. And, you know, we find paradoxes everywhere. Light and dark are seeming opposites, yet one can't exist without the other. Learning to play with paradox is a key to opening our creative channels and our thinking. We are both human and divine. We are both masculine and feminine. We have those energies. We are both young and mature. We are living a living paradox. <laughs> I have a funny little story I want to share with you. It was actually a conversation between two people. I fell out of an airplane. Oh, that's bad. Well, it's all right because I had a parachute. Oh, that's good. Well, it's not really good because the parachute didn't open. Oh, that's bad. No, it's all right because there was a haystack down below me. Oh, that's very good. No, that's bad because there was a pitchfork in the haystack. Oh, that's bad. No, it's all right because I missed the pitchfork. Oh, that's good. No, it's bad. I missed the haystack too. <laughs> when I read that at church today, it made everybody laugh. <laughs> it's so funny, you know, we do that. It's good, it's bad, it's good, it's bad, it's good, it's bad. It's our perspective, right? Jim Collins wrote a great book called Beyond Entrepreneurship. And in it, in it, he said, builders of greatness are comfortable with paradox. Builders of greatness. They don't oppress themselves with the tyranny of the or, O-R, which pushes people to believe that things must be either A or B, but not both. Builders of greatness, he says, liberate themselves with the genius of the both and. Both and. Think about this because either or, either or thinking has its limitations. It doesn't allow for newness or expansion. However, a both and thinking mindset can help us solve challenges. I suggest we shift from thinking in black and white in linear terms like right and wrong and just open ourselves to a paradox mindset instead. 
because almost everything resolves itself into a both and. Spiritually, personally, politically, socially, you name it. There's something on both sides that, if we can make our vision large enough, allow a new possibility, what can emerge is a third way. Ah, and that might be much bigger, fuller, and take the best of both, and then they complement, correct, and empower each other. Mm, yeah. And the yin-yang symbol is a great expression of this. I've shared that before. Yin and yang are just two different energies. And sometimes we need more yin for something, or sometimes we need more yang for something else. Sometimes the pendulum swings from yang to yin and back again. And other times the weaving together of the two creates an amazing harmony, balance, and beauty. What if, what if a paradox is simply a complementary pair of opposites that creates wholeness? A complementary pair of opposites that creates wholeness. Hmm. That's good food for thought, isn't it? So I'd like to take this into just a contemplation for a moment. I invite you to, if it's comfortable, just close your eyes. Ah, and drop into your feeling heart. Just move from your thinking mind down into your heart center. Take a deep cleansing breath. And just relax in this perfect moment of now. And I'm going to ask you some questions and simply notice what shows up in your own awareness. Can you be more loving when you are disliked? Hmm. Or can you be more loving when you dislike someone else? Can you be more generous and giving in times of scarcity? And how might you do that? And we breathe. Can you be more inclusive when you want to shut others out? And can you see the humanity in others, even if they refuse to see it in you? Mm. Take a breath and you can open your eyes. Those are good contemplative questions, I think. Yeah. Ernest Holmes said, we need to develop a good natured flexibility. I like that. Nature demands this, he says, for if the tree did not bend before the wind, it would break. We are apt to hold our thoughts so static that it finally becomes a habit which destroys not only our mental happiness, but also the spiritual influx. Hmm. Are you ready to develop a good-natured flexibility? <laughs> I sure am. Yeah. The Roman god Janus was the god of transitions, duality, time, beginning, endings, gateways, and doorways. And psychiatrist Albert Rothenberg coined the term Janusian thinking. 
I had never heard of this before. And what it is, is it's a type of thinking, it's a practice actually, of actively conceiving and using multiple opposite thoughts simultaneously to solve problems. When we come up against a challenge, an obstacle, or a problem, our instinct is to push against it, right? Don't look at it. Deny it. Janusian thinking, though, suggests that rather than finding the one solution, we open ourselves to multiple possibilities and ways of thinking. Possibility thinking. Isn't that what the science of mind is based on? Possibility thinking. What if? Hmm. It calls us, Janusian thinking, to shift from our limited perspective of the world and take in ideas and possibilities that maybe we'd never considered before. It's open at the top. That's what it is. Yeah. Are you willing to embrace a, a larger, wider range of perspectives than the ones you typically know and hang on to? Are you willing? You know, being willing is the first step in change. So. All right. Finally, I want to talk about the paradox of choosing and allowing. We always get to choose the what of what we want, and we actually need to choose it. Otherwise, we just get more of the same of what we've had before. Anybody? Deciding and setting an intention gives direction, a new cause in the universal law. Then we must get out of the way, not trying to make it happen, but rather allowing, surrendering, allowing it to unfold, and then listening for the parts that are ours to do and take action. This is what treat and move your feet means. Ah, we set a new cause in motion in the treatment, and then we move into the world with confidence and faith that we will be guided into a step or an action for the perfect alignment of our outcome. Yeah, treat and move your feet. Just like in yoga, where it's not efforting or surrendering, it's both. They happen simultaneously. So as we choose something that we want, we also have to allow it to come in its own time. Divine right timing. We talk about that. Yeah. Gosh, so good. So Carl Jung said, the paradox is one of the most of one of the paradox is one of our most valued spiritual possessions. Only the paradox comes anywhere near to comprehending the fullness of life. Hmm. So playing with paradox can be a spiritual practice. It is a spiritual practice because it opens us to acceptance, understanding, compassion another view, and holding that in a spiritual, heartfelt place. If we open to a both-and universe, then we have the opportunity to live fully in cooperation with the universal law and become happier, more vital, prosperous, peaceful, and joyful. The paradox mindset. Are you willing to pay attention this week? I am. Thank you for being here. And again, I am happy to just record this talk that I did at our center this morning. Ah, yes. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Namaste.